What's good, y'all? It's the Demachettes. React and we're back, back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. Let's get so it. excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200K. K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. Morning internet, it is I think about 6.30 in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here in Kakum National Park. I can hear thunder in the distance. Uh -oh. uh, here in Ghana and I am descending from the tree house. Uh, where I'm going to go over there. The, night. the tree house guys. <laughs> there were a lot, lot of jungle sounds last night. There were some monkeys, there were some, oh, what do they call them? Hyrex. Hyrex, which is some sort of rodent. Oh, a, a tree? Screaming sound. But no, it's just amazing to spend the night here in the jungle. And now I am going back to Alaska. They let me park Alaska actually inside the headquarters. <laughs> really nice. So we're just gonna hike back through the jungle and then um, see if I can get a breakfast there as well. I don't know, I feel like jogging through here. <laughs> It is breakfast time. This is for breakfast, a coffee, and an omelette with some bread. Looks very nice. Thank you. So that was. Cafe. Just want to let y'all know, Sierra would have graded that presentation a plus. Yeah, it's a plus. <laughs> National Park. What an awesome place, right? Spend the night. And uh, now I'm moving more towards central Ghana. So I'm moving a bit more inland to the only natural lake in Ghana, apparently. Total distance is 241k, so that should be fine. Suddenly the tar changed into dirt. Kind of as expected, but not here though. That's all right. So far so good. Even taxis come here, so should be fine. At least I think that was a taxi. Ah, see, the one in front of me is definitely a taxi. There's a little taxi sign over the top. There are some potholes here <laughs> that you don't want to disappear in. If I wasn't Some going so far, that looked like it would have been fun for I a mean, moment. Most of the palms here will be for palm oil or coconuts, compared to um, more like the north of Africa, like Morocco, Mauritania. It was all uh, dates, palm dates, but this is uh, these are different palms. My guess is that this is probably a palm oil plantation. Kumasi, is it the road okay? The road is good? Hmm? I go this road? Ah, oh I go. Ah. Right here? Yeah. Not not this way. Ah, okay. Nice view. I just passed through here. Can I go? Thank you. And she got some work to put in. I love the scenery. I really do love the scenery. Jungles is crazy. Fingers crossed that it will just stay dry for a little longer until I've got it through this part. But this is definitely a lot easier when it's dry. 
Uh, I am still not sick of these jungle rides. It's just so beautiful everywhere. All right, and I'm glad you made that mention because of my comment. I remember like when we do road trips and it's just like, what, what would it be? The street? Just a straight yeah, like, shot. <laughs> just a straight shot of highways. Boring. Boring. The hip road hypnosis. It's like you trying to stay up and the lines are crossing. Uh, this is giving yeah. you scenery, bro. I love it. Like the greenery, the views, everything is fine. And you have to stay awake because of the road. Yeah. You know, you never know what what you're gonna get in. She got three cameras, two here, one on her helmet. And I can only imagine what she go through when it's nighttime. I don't know. I, this is my first time watching a full video through. I've just yeah. seen like the clip of, you know, the cops and that yeah. made me interested. Um, this is my first time seeing her go through, so it's it, it's a lot. I mean, I it is a lot. Being in the car, I would get overwhelmed, but she's on a motorcycle and she's just cruising. Mm -hmm. I am now riding through. I think it's Ghana's main gold mining area, and well, Ghana is the biggest producer of gold in Africa Heard that. and the sixth largest in the world which is pretty impressive for such a relatively small country. So there is huge gold mining going on here. And I think just as what I saw in Sierra Leone with the diamonds mining, I think we're gonna see evidence of the gold mining very soon, because it's all around here. It is a huge area that they're uh, mining gold. If you look on uh, Google Earth, You'll see it. It's everywhere. And it all follows one belt. So it kind of snakes through the country, following the gold belt. Yeah, they are digging all around me in this area. Oh, here you can see it already. Oh, here they're digging with excavators. But I think on the right side, all of this is all looking for gold. So gold mining in Ghana already dates back a thousand years. So originally the gold was only used to decorate the kings and the queens of the Ashanti region. But then in 1471, I think it was, the first Portuguese traders came here to Ghana and they noticed people wearing gold jewelry. And that's how the huge trade in, in gold started, well also in ivory and timber, but mainly the gold. And so Ghana traded with the Portuguese, with the Dutch, the British, and other kingdoms in the area. And Ghana actually became very wealthy and powerful. Wow, look at this. But right now, what we're looking at, well, this is what they call also artisanal mining, or small-scale mining. And this small-scale mining, I think it accounts for almost 80% of all the, the gold mining that's being done in the area. And the people that work in this small-scale gold mining they make about three dollars per day, which is, well, especially for the countryside, it's a lot. So they make more doing this than farming. Wow. So right now there are one million people employed as small-scale gold miner, and five million people in total depend on the income. So the gold provides income for a lot of people in Ghana. But the problem with this small-scale mining is that a lot of it goes unlicensed and therefore unregulated. And some of the problems that come with that is a lot of deforestation to start looking for gold. But also the, the workers, they'll use mercury to separate the gold. 
some mercury. That's one of the things I saw when she did the drone footage was it was a lot of digging. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking at all of the greenery and knowing like where we come from, we told y'all, like our area, all we've ever known is just flat land. Yeah. We didn't start seeing mountains and all that until we started coming this way. Um so that's what's one of the things I saw because I I just love greenery and I didn't see a house in sight. Right, you know, right. But of course, it looks like they have a lot of land, so they're not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, finding the gold. Facts. And this mercury, it's terrible. It pollutes all the water. And mm. it actually, if it, it comes into water. drinking water, I think, if you come into contact with mercury, it will lead to all sorts of neurological problems and disease. It's oh, super no. toxic. It's starting to rain a little bit more, and I'm also thinking, where am I going? Um, I'm going to stand under the tree and take off my helmet camera because I'm careful with my microphone connection. So yeah, I suppose it's another place where, you know, the natural resources, they have given a lot of wealth in the past. Well, I can't say that three dollars per day is wealth. But all right, I suppose it's a it's a better salary than working in farming if you're from like the poorer countryside states. But the cost is huge environmental disasters and poisoned water and all the problems that will come from that. So yeah, I'm gonna take my camera off now. Hi. How's it going? Awesome. You good? This way? Oh, <laughs> this is supposed to lead to the lake. I'm very okay. close, it's like seven kilometers to the place where I'm hoping to stay the night. This is the only path that <laughs> leads to the lake, or at least according to my navigation, uh, from this side. It's definitely... Uh, Man, that's a challenge though, I ain't gonna lie. It's okay, it's fine. Don't even look like a car okay, can get I'm on a motorcycle. It used to be paved, but there's not much left of that. This is more steep. Let's see fast for some of this. Fine. That's a nice view too. Oh, I gotta go back a little bit. What where she came from? Well, what's she headed to? Yeah, look at this. Now, that is beautiful. All right. This reminds me of the Caribbean. Yeah. Here we go. That's quite steep. Let's see. She's being real cautious, too. Headed somewhere. That's like sugar cane. All right. Back to signature. It's always when you think, oh, I'm almost there. <laughs> and I start to relax because I'm like, oh, it's just a couple of kilometers left. And then you get like the most challenging riding of the entire day. <laughs> Classic. She made it. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. Oh, it's a very nice, nice canoe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh I must remember how this looks like, otherwise I will not find back where I have to be. Where's she taking us? <laughs> Go for a little canoeing. Well, the lake is quite big in diameter, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. There's a fishing net below that. So all of those sticks are over fishing. I 
really have a plan on where I'm going, I think. <laughs> I'm just going to... The legends say that an Ashanti hunter was chasing an injured antelope and suddenly the antelope just disappeared in a body of water as if the water was trying to save the antelope's life. So the hunter never got the antelope uh, and he named this lake Bosomtwe, which means antelope god. Well, and because it's wow. a sacred lake, the there is a taboo great. of iron touching the water. And well, I read that there are about 30 villages uh, around the lake with a total of 70,000 people, but it doesn't feel like that at all when you're here. I'm like, so there's one guy there with a canoe local. Other than that, it feels like I'm completely alone, so it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people living around here at all. What a day, right? I have a feeling that I'm just seeing a lot of different sides to Ghana which I think makes traveling always more interesting than only visiting the highlights. I do think, I don't know, I think it's also good to see different sides, like what's happening with the gold mining, but then ending up in a super peaceful place over here. I'm going to end this video. I'm going to pedal a little bit further, but it's, it's quite hard <laughs> to pedal while holding up the camera. So I'm going to put the camera down and uh, enjoy a little bit more of a pedal. So that was it for today. Uh, I hope you liked right, it. Yeah, we're going to end the video right there. Make sure y'all check our channel out. Very adventurous. Um, I yeah. love that she said she's definitely outside, like really wanting to get the real views of Ghana. And I think she's doing that. I mean, we enjoyed the views as well. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. Right. Um, we saw a different side. We, I don't think we have ever touched on like the gold industry in Ghana nah, at all. So if y'all would like yeah. us to learn more and share more about that, send those videos in, all right? Yeah, yeah. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace.